podcast not everyone's cup of tea to consume an entire podcast that's why welcome to the ranvi shows highlights channel drs clips subscribe and hit that bell icon i would love to know a little bit more about the kirpan the kadha um what is the significance of what non six know about six when we look at people with turbans when we look at people with beards i feel that six have a different understanding of it and most of the outside world doesn't so i'd love for you to highlight these outward elements of sikhism what does it actually represent first and foremost it's really important to clarify that these things the kirpan the kada the kesh all of these things these don't make you a sick and it is not a sick is somebody who has a turban on their head a sick is not somebody who wears a kada these are simply just spiritual reminders for a lifestyle so i want a lot of people to understand that when when i say the word sikh i don't mean a group of people from punjab that's not what i'm talking about that's not what a real sikh is a sikh is not a punjabi they're not synonymous with each other a sikh is somebody who is willing to learn about their true self and willing to follow and practice all the things that are required to remember that this is all oneness so a really a student of oneness is what we would define as a sikh now going back to the where these sort of religious symbols or 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 articles of faith as some people uh, describe them where they come from is these are really some of the practices that developed as, as the 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 later gurus came in so for those who are unaware guru nanak was born in the 1400s and he had nine other successors and the last one is the one that you've mentioned guru gobind singh ji and from about the time of the fifth and the sixth gurus what we started to see was that there was a need for not just spiritual people but spirituality and the warrior side of things to 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 merge because we were starting to see real oppression in india so the fifth guru some people may not be aware is known as uh, guru arjan dev ji he was actually a martyr so the moguls actually assassinated him he was tortured because they were trying so hard to convert the rest of india that they were just even going after the spiritual masters so the fifth guru was was tortured and he was assassinated by the mughal elite his son guru hargobind ji took on the guruship next and he decided that i can no longer just be a meditator now i have to be a meditator with a sword and so as it goes on and on you begin to see that then his his son was the ninth guru then his grandson guru gobind singh ji was the 10th guru so you began to see that these gurus were now spiritual and warriors at the same time so they were the ones who were actually going and fighting some of these battles they weren't just sitting in the back saying you guys go i'll stay back here they said no we have to be at the forefront so these gurus became warriors and meditators so they were trying to teach that this is what the society needs right now this is what the world re- needs right now we need to be both and so in doing that they cr- they created a code of conduct that if you are to live this lifestyle there's a couple of things that you need to do and and they gave us what they call the 5k's the basically five religious symbols that were something that you have to keep with you all the time but they were really five reminders of different ways different practices that you need to hold on to so the first one is kada which you'll see every sick will wear a a a bangle around their their hand but all of these have very deep spiritual meaning and and actually we could spend a lot of time but I'll very quickly go through those so why does a sick wear a kada well for multiple reasons number 1 it's round so it has no beginning and ending and this is a reminder to you that actually god is always there there is always a oneness so you have to kind of see this as a way of reminding you that no matter what you do you know when we were kids we we were taught that you know whatever if you stick your hand out to do something wrong the kada will, will be there as a reminder you or as a reminder and there are so many beautiful parts of, of of this symbolism you see this is intrinsic in in indian culture that whenever a student historically would go and uh take on a guru even if they were like a music teacher some some sort of teacher the teacher would initiate and say that 
I now accept you as my student. And they would wrap a string around their hand and say, I accept you as my student. So we see the Qara as the guru saying, I accept you as my student. And this is basically why every Sikh or anybody who identifies as a Sikh, even if they don't wear anything else, they basically say, this is my symbol that I belong to this guru, that I belong to this school of thinking. And I'm allowing this teacher to influence my life and teach me how to live. And in that same way, we were given a, a kirpan, which we talked about, which is the sword. We were given kesh, and we were told that if you keep your hair completely intact, so some people are very surprised when they look at me and I tell them that I've never cut my hair from the day that I was born. So they ask, oh, how long is your hair? How long is your beard? All these sorts of questions come about. And, and again, these are just reminders. What is the purpose of keeping long hair? You'll begin to see all spiritual masters in all different traditions have a long hair. And there's something very beautiful about watching your hair grow, watching the color change. And it's again, another reminder, when you look at yourself in the mirror, you realize I'm not even control of, I mean, I'm not in control of this body. This body has its own life cycle. This body is doing its own thing. So when you watch your own hair grow and you watch it turn gray, you begin to realize this body is gonna go one day. This is not me. So it's all part of the spiritual training. So you've got your kara, your kirpan, and you've got your kesh. And then you've got your kanga. Kanga is a little comb that you wear at the back of your uh, head. And that's just a reminder of cleanliness. Some, some people say that it's to do with having a, a clean and holistic lifestyle, that you're always reminding yourself that I have to be clean in the world. I have to allow myself to be presentable in such a way. I can't just be somebody that goes, sits in the jungle and meditates. You know, Guru Nanak was invited many times to join the spiritual elite around the world. Every time he went and spoke to spiritual masters, the spiritual masters would ask Guru Nanak, what is happening in the world? And Guru Nanak's reply was, the world is burning and the people who can help are sitting up here on a mountain meditating. And Guru Nanak rejected this idea that you need to go sit in a mountain or be a monk in order to be spiritual. He said, I'm going to show you that I can have a job, I can have a wife, I can have children and still reach spiritual peak. And the reason I'm going to do that is because that's what normal people do. Normal people are doing this. So I need to show them how do you be spiritual doing normal things. And that's what that kanga represents, living a lifestyle where you're just carrying out your daily duties. And the final is a kashera. Kashera is these briefs, these shorts that you wear underneath your clothing. And again, that's about self-restraint. Your kashara is about don't think that your life is just about trying to get as many relationships and sleep with as many partners. It's about having self-restraint and not thinking that life is all about um, going out there and just grabbing all the, all the sensual experiences in the world. So all of these things are really practical reminders of, of how you can live your life because there are so many instances in life where your mind does get tempted, your mind does go in the wrong directions and you, you use these tools to remind you that this is not what I'm really here to achieve in life. And when you look at yourself in the mirror, the idea is you shouldn't see your own reflection. When you look in the mirror, you should see your guru's image. And when you, when you see the guru in front of you, then you realize, oh, my life is about my guru, it's not about me. It's about my master teaching me how to really live not about just me trying to figure out life in my own way. But it doesn't mean that if you don't have these things, that you're inferior in some way or that you're not a good Sikh. Anybody from any background can be a Sikh. Guru Nanak's um, most um, beloved companion was somebody called Pai Mardana, who was a Muslim. So Guru Nanak and Pai Mardana traveled around the world for decades. And so his best friend was a Muslim. But he, you wouldn't call him a Muslim because he was also following Guru Nanak. So a Sikh is not somebody who is rejecting other religions and saying, I've given up other religions and I'm now going to only be a Sikh. That's not what Guru Nanak Sikh he is. You can be a Hindu who is following the Guru's tradition. You can be a Muslim who is following the Guru's tradition. And Guru Nanak went around the world and spoke to so many people and he said, let me teach you what being a Muslim really means. And there are verses in his writings which are teaching people about how to do a namaz, how to do fasting properly. People are surprised that Guru Granth Sahib actually has this sort of information. And it teaches people from the Hindu traditions. This is, what, um, this is how you really look at Krishna. This is what Shiva really means. This is how you celebrate holy. 
And it's all about how do you use all of these as opportunities to understand your mindset. And all of these, they go back to, don't worry about the external. The external doesn't define who a Sikh is. These things do not define who a Sikh is. A Sikh is completely defined by the person who sorted out his own mind and sorted out his mindset. Wow. Okay, this was the highlight of this episode for me. Uh, just uh, having this conversation with these are questions that I've had in my mind since I was a little boy. And uh, it's, it's why I was waiting for this conversation for two years. Mm-hmm.